Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with my card for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge that I'm actually on time for, most likely because I'm the host this week. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to use Simon Says Stamps Happy Hello Stamp Set again. My last video, I did the unboxing and I made some cards using a bunch of pattern paper and some of the sentiments from this set. And I really wanted to use this like heart image. It's very like folk art sort of looking. So I took a piece of Distress watercolor paper. I have the smooth side facing up. I put it in my Misty. Um, I got the heart lined up. It doesn't really matter where it goes because I'm going to die cut it. But got that on there. I used my anti-static powder tool and I stamped the image with clear embossing ink going to coat it with Simon's Detail White Embossing Powder. So this is going to be kind of boring because white on white. <laughs> but I'm going to add color with some positively saturated inks. So after I got the embossing powder on there, I'm going to melt this with my heat tool. Super satisfying. Always tilting it back and forth in the light, making sure there's no dull grainy areas. And I have this like persistent little <laughs> chunk of hair. <laughs> I tried to edit it out of as many shots as possible because it's just like sticking like straight out of my head. It, it, it'll make more appearances in this video. I could only take it out so often. So anyway, when I say usually my hair is just an absolute disaster, it, it just, it is. Anyway, after I was done heat embossing it, I die cut it with one of the nested round hearts wafer dies. And then I just took my little Simon glass mat here and I took a couple pieces of painter's tape and I stuck the painter's tape sticky side up onto there just to hold this heart in place and then I can smush the inks I want to use. So I'm using four different colors of positively saturated inks and I've watercolored with these in other videos. I can't remember the last time I did this but yeah these inks are like water reactive like you know ink blend with them, watercolor with them, stamp with them, all the fun things. So I'm using Lemonade, Surf, Rose, and Royal. I've sped this up because until the like color really starts going down, you can't really tell what I'm doing. I even had trouble here at first because again, it's white on white. I'm trying to film, so I'm trying to keep my big old head out of the way, but it's hard to see what I'm doing. And some of these little, these first little bits, like I'm just filling in the little open areas because these images are quite large and solid. So I'm just using a water brush, picking up the color with that water brush and then like filling in these, these little areas and trying to be fairly careful especially with that rose color because if you work with pink or red you know pigments or color coloring that sort of thing they just have a mind of their own and want to get everywhere so you saw me there I actually took one of my ink pads and stuck it underneath the uh, little glass mat to put it at an angle so that I can better see what I'm doing because then my light's kind of reflecting a little bit and I can actually see the heat embossing a bit better and then and then I had a better time filling in all these little just these little bits here and there like the the wings and you know there's little like little spots on the florals and different things so I filled those with those different colors and then you really start to see it come together when I start adding the surf color because I'm going to completely paint around all of this to make that heat embossing stand out so then it starts to make sense <laughs> so I just went around and painted it I'm not going for perfection, although I will say like I don't use distress watercolor paper too often. I like it best for when I'm using like distress inks, uh, distress oxide inks, that sort of thing, because they just they they go together like peanut butter and jelly. You know, they work together so great. Um, distress watercolor paper is also really nice to ink blend onto, just because of the way the inks sit on it. But I'm discovering that I really like how the positively saturated inks blend on distress watercolor paper so I might need to play with that a bit more because yeah it just works I was quite happy with it um so I just went around painted and made sure I got into like all the little nooks and crannies so that these image this whole image you know actually shows up nicely and then I even took the ink on the water brush and went around the very edges like how I show sometimes with a black marker that sort of thing when I'm like edging die cut cardstock etc um, I just did it with the surf just to coat that little bit of white exposed cardstock. It was just a subtle little thing, but it just kind of finished it off a bit. So once I was done, 
I wiped off all that ink. Um, the painter's tape, I just like stick it to the side of my desk because I'll use it for other projects, you know, to tape down wafer dyes, all that thing, sort of stuff. So I set all that aside. And then in a video the other day, that pansy card, those pink pansies I did, I'll link to that at the end of this video if you missed it. But I showed um, me adding Perfect Pearl Powder to this mini mister with water to make my own little shimmer spray. So I pulled that little bottle out. So I've got my little shimmer spray here. Got my die cut machine with the, this is the Spellbinders Platinum 6 with the base, with the base platform. And I have two metal shims. This is my perfect sandwich combo for Simon's 3D embossing folders. With Simon's embossing folders on Simon's website, it does list other options for different machines, etc. You kind of got to figure out what works. My biggest piece of advice is do not force it. If it's not going through your machine, don't force it. You don't want to break anything. But for me, this is what works perfectly. And then I have another piece of Distress watercolor paper. I've shaken up my little mini mister, so I got my little shimmer spray going on here because I've shown in a bunch of videos. I like to mist my cardstock before using embossing folders because it helps prevent it from cracking. And then with this, it also adds a bit of shimmer because you can never have too much. So I misted the cardstock, the smooth side of the cardstock with that, and I put it in my embossing folder. This is the, what is this one called? The Floral Festoon embossing folder. So I got the cardstock or the watercolor paper misted. I've got my little sandwich platform, put the cardstock inside the embossing folder, and then I'm gonna just run this right through with the fold of the folder like going through first works like a dream and then i pull it out and it's all gorgeously embossed and because of the water portion it hasn't cracked at all i get a deeper impression and then there's also shimmer which i will show with my flashlight at the end because of course it's always harder to show in video but it's there it's beautiful love it so set that aside grabbed a scrap of white cardstock i'm going to white heat emboss a sentiment from that happy hello stamp set onto this little scrap of cardstock. So same MO, use my antiseptic powder tool, inked up the stamp with clear embossing ink, use the detail white embossing powder over it. I'm gonna melt that with my heat tool. Once that's melted, I'm just gonna grab my like scrap grid paper, just so I don't get ink all over the place, AKA get my elbows or my fingers in it and smear it all over the place. So scrap paper, blending brush and that same rose ink and I'm going to blend this pretty heavily over this piece and then I'm going to take my microfiber cloth and I'm going to fairly vigorously remove all the ink that's sitting on top of the sentiment which a lot of times there's a lot so the white heat embossed sentiment resists some of the ink but these inks especially but pretty much any ink is going to sit on top of whatever you've heat embossed so either use you know a paper towel microfiber cloth etc wipe that off and then you get a more crisp embossed image once that was done i used one of my sentiment label dies to die cut that i also cut down a piece of lemon chiffon cardstock to 11 inches by four and a quarter scored it at five and a half so this will be a top folding a2 note card and my background is now dry and I decided to trim that down a little bit to just slightly smaller so it's about like four inches by five and a quarter so that the um, note card will kind of frame it a bit and the yellow peeks out a little. So I was happy with how that was looking. So I'm going to put that card base into my Misty. I'm going to line up that big heart image again onto the inside of the card. Once I've got that lined up, and there's that just errant like chunk of hair showing up. <laughs> I'm going to ink up the stamp with that lemonade ink, stamp that onto the inside of the card, and then I took another sentiment from the set lined that up once I get that straight and lined up there's that hair again seriously you guys it just I'm just annoyed <laughs> it was bugging me all day like I just you know you just it's like a little beacon anyway anyway used royal ink for that sentiment and then for the outside I'm just using craft tacky glue to adhere this panel this embossed panel so got the craft tacky glue on there, which gives me a little bit of, you know, wiggle room to get this straight. Once I've got it straight, I just stick it under my Misty so that it can just kind of hold it down. You know, it holds down all the edges without flattening, you know, all that embossed detail. It just holds it down, lets the um, glue dry and adhere. 
And then to adhere my little watercolored heart, I used uh, Simon's Big Mama foam tape. Big Mama, because the roll is literally enormous. Lerf. I've been using this stuff for years. I don't know even know what roll I'm on at this point. But anyway, um, love it because it's nice and thin. It's not... It is literally like the thinnest foam tape I've ever come across. So I can get, you know, a little bit of dimension, but like not a ton of bulk, which perfect. So coated the back of the heart with that, pop that into place. And then to adhere that little sentiment strip, I just used some thin foam squares on there and then held that with my little reverse tweezers. And I used my little T-square ruler, making sure things are straight. So yeah, T-square ruler, there we go get it in place, get the sentiment in place, press her down. And then of course I'm going to add bling. And of course I have bling in multiple colors. <laughs> Sadly, I only have links to two of them. Um, the little aqua color hearts. Those are Trinity stamps, berry blue jelly drops. I don't think, I can't find a link to them. I don't think they're available anymore, but I refuse to get rid of them because they're beautiful. But the other ones I have studio Cadia blue azurite pearls. These ones, oh, the color. They're so gorgeous. And then some oldie but goodie uh, pineapple delight crystals. So of course, you know, I've got the matchy matchies and all the things. So I get those adhered into place, which is dabs of craft tacky glue. And then I'm going to pair this card with one of Simon's metallic doll pink envelopes and I'll call it a day. So here's my flashlight to show you guys that shimmer on the background. Like it's subtle because I didn't add a ton of perfect pearls to that mini mister, you know, also you don't want to add too, too much. Because if, if you have it rubbing off, then you've got too much uh, Perfect Pearl Powder. But this does not rub off. It's good to go. There's a binder in it. Life is great. And as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll link to all the supplies I used. In the blog post, I will link to the Color Throwdown Challenge if you guys would like to play along. Because it's open to everyone and it's just for fun. And it's fun to see what everyone else comes up with with these color combos. There's tons of inspiration. So that will be linked in my blog post linked directly below. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting, telling the robot overlords that you like what you're seeing so I can keep doing what I'm doing. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.